Welcome to DXB Today, another edition right here uh, on Dubai One TV. Great to have your company this evening. People, we got ourselves a problem. And that problem is the plastic pandemic, which is posing a few questions out there. Can the planet coexist with plastic and vice versa? I'm not sure we've got the answers around the sofa, but we've got a number of experts who hopefully will point us in the right direction. Let's see what is coming up. Well, since it's Earth Day, Ash went down to check out the Animal Conservation and Welfare Project at Atlantis the Palm. And like you said, it's Earth Day today, so it's something that we're going to be celebrating and talking about today. And of course, I just wanted to know if you guys celebrate it. Is it like Earth Hour? Do you guys do that at home? Let me know. Well, the onus is on you to tell us what you do first and foremost before you, you throw it. us under the bus here. Uh, what have you? Did you turn your lights off before you came out? Uh, yeah, I do actually. Every time I leave my house, I turn every single light off. Quite Make right sure, too. but the AC is stay on because, <laughs> you know, it gets hot sometimes and humid. <laughs> it's it's a difficult one, isn't it? And I think this is one of the things I think I want to address in this episode uh, today is because yeah, it is Earth Hour. I think there's no one around this sofa who's going to sit here and say that plastic is fantastic. And I think that is 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 a sort of sentiment the world over. It's very, there are very few people that will stand on a rooftop and shout about the benefits of, although we know that it is an integral part, it has been an integral part of earth and industry and manufacturing for so many years. But it's trying to find this 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 common goal and the same could be said for earth hour as well there is nobody who is going to sit there and go nah i don't believe in earth hour nah not at all uh, because it doesn't make sense you know for anyone to do that uh, but are we walking the walk whilst we're talking the talk is the question that i'm putting and i want to know how many people out there well i know that all the guests that we're about to bring on are walking the talk at the moment um how many of uh, the rest of the world are at the moment that's a good question. But you know, with Earth Day actually, here's my little thing about it. Yes, we are celebrating Earth Day, but it is just mostly all talk as you're kind of saying. I think maybe as a society, we could do a little bit more about it. We could, if we could give it a bit more focus, like we do Valentine's Day, for example, True. then maybe uh, people would participate more and, and give the maybe have a bit more heart. What, yeah. buy roses on Earth Day? <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I mean, how everybody's just a part of it on Valentine's Day and yet on Earth Day, it's not really coming from the heart, is it? You're just doing it for the gram. I'm confused. Is Earth Day the same as Earth Hour? No, it's I not. Think, no, it's completely different. Earth Hour, from what I know, <laughs> and I'm not sure, we can ask our experts <laughs> later, but like, is it just like making sure, because you ser I think you save a lot of energy on that day, on that specific hour, but like Earth Day is like talking about everything in, in more specific. I don't, the other thing I get, and again, I may be taking a turn on this one, but it's, it, you know, we have no shortage of focus days, do we? True. You know, International Diabetes Day, International This Day, blah, blah, blah. Water Day. Um, but, you know, shouldn't we be thinking about this every single day of True. the year? And I'm not taking anything away from the focus on one day and the celebration of, but does that therefore pull the focus away from making it a year-long year long. initiative yeah. and focus? You do have a point there. I've but made two great points. I'm done now. <laughs> Deal with this, all right? <laughs> you know what? We can talk about this a little longer, or let's just pull in more of the experts. So let's find out who our guest co host is. Hi, my name is Maz. I'm a sustainability strategist, and I can't wait to get the conversation going today. Well, Maz will be joining us right here in a little bit. But first, speaking of committing to sustainable practices, Ash went down to Atlantis, the Palm, to find out what they're decide or what they're dedicating the health and well-being of their marine inhabited zoo. Check this out. Hi everyone, this is Ashwarya Ajit and I'm fascinated to dive into the subject of sustainability and conservation with Atlantis Dubai's initiative, Atlantis Atlas Project. Join me as we explore this iconic resort's commitment and how they're leading charge when it comes to responsible tourism and creating a positive impact on our planet. Kelly, I'm so excited to be here. It's fascinating, this place. I mean, I can't stop looking around. It is still, after all these years, one of the most fascinating spots in Dubai, I would say. Now, as the Director of Marine uh, Animal Operation and Sustainability, I want to know a little bit more about 
the different projects that you have over here, the latest one being the Atlantis Atlas project. Can you tell us about that, please? At Atlantis Dubai, we're completely committed to sustainability, both environmental and social. And in June 2021, we launched Atlantis Atlas project, which is our commitment to do business in ways that are good for both the people and planet. One or two examples is that we have a water bottling plant that we actually built here on property that allows us to reduce single-use plastic and instead reuse a glass bottle. Fascinating. Kelly, I'm really interested to know about the Atlantis Fish Hospital and overall the resort's commitment towards animal welfare. So at the Fish Hospital, what this means is that we have breeding projects, for example. So we like to be able to breed our own fish, um, and this can be sharks, rays, sea jellies, in order for us not to have to take any from the wild, we can just breed them ourselves and then put them on display in the aquarium like you can see. In addition, the fish hospital provides us with an area that we can treat sick animals. You know, it's very normal for animals to, um, you know, feel sick just like humans do sometimes and we have the ability to take them out and give them the rest that they need. And we have a team of three veterinarians that help us to take care of the animals as well. As part of the Atlantis Atlas project, how do you engage guests in raising awareness about animal welfare and conservation? We have a range of different experiences that people can take part in. So they can dive uh, with our marine life, they can snorkel, um, they can do immersive programs with like dolphins or sea lions. Um, and we just have these really, really experiential bucket list experiences for guests to do. Now, the core part of these experiences is they're not just fun, they are super fun, but they're also uh, really educational. So every single time somebody interacts with a marine animal, we're teaching them about that animal and uh, what it takes to help protect them in the wild. So I would just say to everybody is, is engage with marine life in a safe manner, in a controlled manner, learn as much as you can about these animals so that you can help ch make changes in your life to better protect them. Incredible. Kelly, thank you so much. We've learned so much today and I can't wait to have a proper tour of the place. No problem. So guys, that's a wrap for me here today. We've learned so much from educational programs to contributions to animal welfare. Atlantis Dubai is definitely setting the bar high when it comes to responsible tourism. Uh, now, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think Ash is surely the only person that goes down to an industrial aquarium wearing designer clothing. Am I right with that one or not? I think you are. Yeah, gets dressed up to go to the aquarium. <laughs> yeah. Of course she does. Uh, right, we are. More from the team a little later on, but now on to our guest co-host today, a sustainability strategist on a mission uh, to foster positive uh, change through climate education and social impact initiatives. Known for her collaborations with the United Nations, the Global Economic Forum, to build inclusivity worldwide. Please welcome to the show, Maz Fletcher. Maz, great to have you with us. Thanks indeed so, but so much indeed for being with us. Thank you for having me. Um, you were probably just backstage there going, what on earth are these muppets <laughs> talking about, you know? But maybe you can clarify for us. So, Earth Hour, Earth Day. Mm -hmm. I mean, one and the same to a certain degree, different focuses? Um, I think, as you said, there's, there's lots of days to try and raise awareness. Earth Hour is about focusing on you know, the lights, the, the ele electricity that we use, the amount that we consume, and trying to pay, make people more aware about small little actions like turning off the light okay. in a very short period of time, obviously. And then Earth Day is a, is a broader focus, more holistic. Um, the United Nations sends the themes for the day, um, and then we you know, do different events, initiatives. It's a, maybe a bit more of a stronger um, attempt to get people to be more aware and, and do things to, to help the environment. OK, let's set the tone. Um, and I don't want to get an arg into an argument straight off, all right? Okay. But I'm going to play the role of the ignoramus, OK? Mm -hmm. I'm going to play the role of the belligerent um, person that's been using plastic all their life, etc. That's not my beliefs. Mm -hmm. I'm just playing the role for the purposes of furthering this conversation. Um, when you meet people like me who go, yeah, but what am I going to eat my takeaway food with if mm -hmm. I haven't got plastic? How do you address that sort of mentality? Um, I think I start by focusing on the impact that it has on them personally. And there's a huge health impact related to plastics that we consume. 
you know, some, some studies show that we're consuming a credit card worth of plastics every day, ingesting that. A day? A day. Wow. And so there's, there's a massive health impact and there's, you know, it's, there's not enough research that's been done on how that actually impacts our body, but it's been linked to different types of cancers, you know, uh, plastic has been found in, in every part of our body, right down to fetuses that haven't even been born yet, um, you know, are having, uh, are containing microplastics. So I think that it's a really understudied area and from a health perspective, which a lot of people obviously care about personally for themselves, um, we need to think about what we're, you know, how we're using different products and what impact they might be having on us. Mm. Obviously beyond that, there's been the environmental impact and the fact that it's um, damaging different types of animals, different ecosystems, um, which you know, I hope people care about um, or at least start to see and start to maybe relate to a bit more, particularly when it's things like here in the UAE. Um, you know, the beautiful landscapes that we have and, and that being damaged by different plastics. Mm. Now you mentioned the UAE and plastics and uh, we all know about the UAE single plastic ban that's come up mm -hmm. at this year, 2024, and it's not the only country. You've got Canada doing it, you've got Kenya, lots of countries in the Car Caribbean. You've got, um, I think, uh, there's a number of countries that are doing it, but still there's this report saying that plastics are going to triple by 2050. Mm. How is that happening when there are all these countries that are banning it already? Um, I mean, as you said earlier, plastic is a very durable um, and you know, a great resource for a lot of things. And there's not many alternatives, even though there's so much uh, research being done into to different alternatives. Um, but it's, it's still very popular. It's still very it's cheap. It's durable. Um, you know, it's, it's very easy to get hold of. Um, so even you know, new companies that are trialing products and things, the alternatives available to them are not always um, that, that broad, they haven't got that many options, and so you know, result in, in using plastics continuously. Um, and I think that you know, we all have uh, a bottom line, and and plastics are the cheapest option. So that's why people are choosing to use it more and more. I wanted to ask you: Do you see a shift in people's uh, mindset towards recycling plastic, or mm. maybe not using plastic altogether, or the single-use plastic as well? Let's say yeah. in the country or worldwide as well. Definitely, uh, I've lived here for almost nine years, and I've seen a massive shift in the awareness um, related to plastic and the environment generally, which I'm very happy to see. Um, I think people still have questions about recycling. They find it a bit challenging. They don't always know what, which plastics they can recycle and can't recycle. So there's an education element of that that could, could probably help to you know, give people more confidence in that, the, that when they're recycling, it's actually gonna be recycled at the end yeah. point. Um, but definitely I've noticed a lot more people caring about this issue. Okay, that's good. Um, if, how much of a pandemic is it at the moment? No, actually, we know it's a pandemic. We know that we are overusing plastics the world over. Uh, we see it on a daily basis. Um, and I think, again, I go back to that point earlier. I don't think there are many advocates out there saying we should have more plastic out there. But as you make that point, you know, if a plastic is an integral part of live business manufacturing, can the planet and plastic coexist or not? Um, I think we can coexist, but obviously plastic needs to be reduced massively. Um, you know, if we're treating it right, plastic is an extraordinary uh, material and it can be resourced. And even though it does weaken every time it's uh, recycled, sorry, then it, you know, it, will, it can still be recycled though and it still can be turned into other alternative um, products and, and things that we can you know, continue to create with a circular economy. Mm. So that it's not that we shouldn't be using plastic altogether, but we need to be mindful of the, the end point, the end of life cycle of a plastic. Mm. And not just you know, get a plastic bottle and immediately throw it in the bin, but think about how we can maintain that material in the life cycle as long as possible and create as much of a circular economy as we possibly can. Mm. Absolutely. And other than, of course, the individuals who make that extra effort, it's also about countries mm -hmm. doing their, their, their uh, push for this as well. Now, with that, what could you tell us about the Global Plastic Treaty? Uh, the Global Plastic Treaty is, uh, uh, is an attempt to try and get more countries to commit to, um, to reducing their plastic. I think it's by 60%. Mm. Um, and so um, to, to be reducing the amount of plastic that they're consuming and using within the economy um, and yeah, to be basically putting more commitments out for that. Um, going back to the, the bands, yeah. you know, and, 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 and you know, it's always a nice story to start a year with, isn't it? January the 1st, we are banning plastic mm. bags, etc. Again, there will be very few to argue against it, but Again, how difficult is it to implement as well? How difficult is it to change the mindset, especially in a country like 
the UAE, where there are so many different nationalities, all living under one roof, all mm -hmm. with different approaches and different relationships with plastic? Yeah, I mean, if you look at other countries, they've been a lot, very successful at implementing these kind of initiatives where, you know, they charge a marginal amount for yeah. a plastic bag, but it, it triggers something as people are going to you know, the tills and they're thinking, even if it's five fills or, you know, a dirham, uh, is it something that they want to mm. uh, spend on? And so they start to think about whether they actually need that plastic bag. I think that maybe depends on the uh, disposable income yeah. of who you're targeting, right? And um, wealthier populations maybe m might not start to think about that question. But, you know, um, it's something that at least prompts people to start considering mm. whether they actually need that product to mm. start with. Well, Maz, we still have a lot to discuss in this episode, but coming up, we get the exclusive details about a one-of-a-kind record-breaking scientific expedition in the UAE, the UAE Arctic Ocean Row. Plus, we have got music in the studio, so don't go anywhere. <laughs> 